I'll start demonstrating some technologies in the education area by starting with science. And today, teachers can get sturdy technology data probes and accessories that they can use either with individual students or that they can project with smart boards or projectors. I've scrolled down so you can see some of the options and I clicked biology just as a point of illustrating that there are many different probes that are available. With students creating experiments they can now communicate their information in more advanced ways. And this communication among scientists and students is nothing new. These are the common core standards in biology that have been available now for almost 20 years. And you'll see that the, there is an expectation that students will be able to map to what scientists do when they communicate among themselves. Now this just shows some data probe equipment that I've acquired and it's sturdy. I've used it with K-12 kids and we've had a lot of interesting experiments. And with the data probes they have their own display functions but you can also bring information into other technology tools such as the spreadsheet where you can have the students illustrate and present their work using possibilities such as charts and you might want them to go to recommended charts to see what comes up and you might want them to experiment and look at what different types of charts might illustrate just to point out what works and what doesn't always work when it comes to selecting data representations. So you can use this in a number of ways. It's important to illustrate to students that science is a very participatory environment where data is developed through studies and research and then shared among scientists so that you know we use technologies to do the sharing and students can certainly benefit from exposure to technologies and science. Uh, Jenkins participatory culture that he talks about has certainly been the way that scientists have communicated for as long as we've had a scientific method. Uh, social studies students have lots of opportunities now to find primary resources. I went to the Smithsonian to see what I could find and I was searching under the early um, American history and I find a number of letters, I find a gazette, I could have students go to these types of articles, read them, look at the original resources and bring this a little bit closer and find other articles that were presented at about the same time starting to pull together a study where they're looking at history from the perspective of the original primary documents. Students could collect some visual images from these different points in history. With information gathered from these authentic levels, students could then create word processing reports, they could do PowerPoints, they could even put their growing knowledge forward on a website, maybe something that the school has. And schools today are even subscribing to learning management systems that can allow teachers to use programs such as Schoology to post information and assignments so that students can access it when they're in class or later. And I didn't want to leave out pre-K teachers, so I went to Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything, where she really has a strong compendium of many different possibilities that are out there. So I thought augmented reality is an interest that I have because I work a lot with virtual reality and I'm trying to see the difference this is that come up. But I kept on scrolling down and I found something for pre-K teachers with writing numbers. And if I had a pre-K class, and I'll scroll down, that are more and more getting iPads, I might try something like this where you can have an application that you overlay the iPad which actually brings up 3D images that appear to hover around the iPad. 
at this grade level, you might have a second technology being something like a smart board. I've had one teacher who actually worked with these type of technologies, and she had the students interacting directly with the smart board because they weren't yet up to being able to type. And even with online education for adults, you don't need to have static discussion boards all the time. Here's an environment that was recently used by adult students who were presenting their own curriculum designs. Everyone assembled and presented their own slide presentation explaining their thoughts. Here students presented and talked about their work explaining in a sort of synchronous real time the ideas that they had generated. Uh, is the sound on the mic coming in clear? The last group presenting had some important ideas about creating a simulated topographic environment to test different environmental and uh, geographic topographic features, something that might possibly get funded from the National Science Foundation. So virtual spaces can become real meeting spaces for adults that must be working at a distance. A second technology that I used here was actually having students vote on each other's work on different parameters and they were given badges as a result based on the scores they gave each other. Now this wasn't a classroom um, evaluation but it was an informal peer review that led to badges. Now I've used Credly for years to issue badges. I use the free version and you can see some of the badges that I've created over time and issued to students generally based on their evaluation and peer review. I've often used another technology, the discussion boards within a class, to loop people back after their visit to virtual environments. So use your creativity and imagination and grounding in technology and understanding of education to find ways to thread different technologies together to engage your audience and sustain their learning over extended periods of time.